Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Workshop Tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, BuyAPi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that could be made using the YouTube Workshop Kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this ninth and last tutorial, Passive Infrared Sensor, we'll connect a 5 volt PIR sensor to the Raspberry Pi. For this last circuit, we'll need 5 volt power from this pin, and we'll use GPIO 7 for the signal from the Passive Infrared Sensor. When it comes time to wire up our circuit, we know that we need the eighth pin up from the bottom on the right hand side to connect to GPIO 7. There's the eighth pin. We'll connect this pretty much anywhere on the breadboard. Now let's connect our 5 volt pin, which is up here at the top right corner of the Pi, to the second power rail, which we haven't used before. So now looking at the board, we have a three volt power rail here and a five volt power rail here. So make sure that you connect any further sensors to the correct rail so that you don't fry them. Now looking at the passive infrared sensor, we have three pins here on the bottom. According to the wiring diagram, we connect from this rightmost pin to our five volt power rail. The middle pin is our yellow signal cable going from here to the breadboard. And finally, our black ground wire from the leftmost pin to our ground rail. Once your wiring is done, Attach the passive infrared sensor to something so that you can control its orientation and point it in a direction that works for you. Now we can plug in the Raspberry Pi and copy and paste or open our downloaded code. Let's look at our final program for the passive infrared sensor. This time we'll introduce using try and accept blocks as well as using if and statements and also ELIF statements. Let's take a closer look at those. The real meat of our program is in this block here, but you'll notice that we have both a try and an accept statement. Any code that's part of this try block, if it encounters an error, will look for an accept block to match up with it. If the error type encountered in the try block matches the one specified after accept, then the code in the accept block here will be executed. What this means for us is that when we press control C to interrupt this program, instead of seeing a generic error message on screen, we'll see print, and then we'll also reset the GPIO pins. Within our while true loop, this time we'll use an if and an and combined, so that both the previous state have to be zero and the current state is one. We're flipping back and forth between the two states of detected and not detected, and we want to make sure that we're only alerted when we go from a non-detection state to a motion detected state. We're using if and we're using elif statements. Let's take a closer look at why we can use an elif. If we need to program for multiple cases, we can begin using an if statement and then use multiple elif statements and then finish with an else statement for any other result that doesn't match the first three cases. That's it for the code walkthrough. There are a few more details that you can figure out, but there are lots of comments throughout the code to help you understand this one. 
Let's use sudo python 9 underscore pir dot py to run the program. You can already see as I moved around behind the camera that the motion detector was triggered. Now I'm holding really still and I'll move my hand in front of the sensor to trigger it. Now we're ready to create our own alarm systems for our cookie cupboards, garages, or homes. Remember when we press Control C to exit the program this time, we should have a nice clean display instead of our usual error message. Thanks for watching this tutorial series on the YouTube Workshop Kit. We hope you learned lots and enjoyed yourselves as much as we did.